thì nghe IELTS listening là một quá trình dài hạn đòi hỏi sự kiên nhẫn của người học. Chính vì vậy, việc quan trọng là phải tìm được một phương pháp luyện tập khiến cho bạn cảm thấy thú vị và có thể gắn bó lâu dài. Và theo kinh nghiệm luyện tập của thầy, những bài listening test rất hữu ích cho các bạn trong việc luyện nghe. Nào, ngay bây giờ hãy đến với bài listening test số 17 ngày hôm nay nhé. Bắt đầu thôi. Write all your answers on the listening question pages. At the end of the real IELTS test, you'll be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers from the question booklet to an answer sheet. You should be prepared to do this with the practice test. Now, hear a student called Joanna telling her friend about an arts festival which is being held in the city where they are studying. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 and 2. You will see that there is also an example which has been done for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one and two. Hi, Joanna. Where have you been? Hi, Dave. I had to go into college to return a DVD I'd borrowed from the library. Oh, right. But while I was there, I got some information about the City Arts Festival that starts next week. Oh, yeah. I saw a poster advertising it somewhere. Yeah. And I picked up this leaflet from the library. It gives you the website address. So as I was there, I logged on to get more information. Actually, although they've got the full programme of events fixed now, you can't book online, which seems strange. There's a number to phone, though. Hmm. And are there student discounts? I guess so, but I didn't notice. Anyway, there are three things I'd like to see. An Italian film, a rock concert and an art exhibition. Oh. <laughs> the exhibition's free and you don't need to book, so I'll definitely go to that. But I'm going to get tickets for the film in case they sell out. Mm, good idea. You can always buy concert tickets at the door because that's in a really big hall. Right. Before you listen to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to read questions 3 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 3 to 10. So, when does the festival actually start? Well, it's usually held the first week of October, but it's earlier this year for some reason. The opening night is September the 20th, and events go on till the end of the month. Hmm. And have you got that phone number? Yeah, it's here. Uh, look, it's 0967 990 776. OK, I'll write it down. 0967 990 776. Thanks. I thought the local council made a profit from the festival, but it says here that there's a commercial sponsor. It's a local bank. I didn't know that. Neither did I. What other events have they got on? 
Um, as well as the art exhibitions and stuff that's open every day, there are special events each day. Like on Monday, there's a musical in the city hall. Yeah. That's only three pound sixty-five for students. Hmm, I think I'll give that a miss. I've got football training on Mondays, but I'm free on Wednesday. There's a jazz band on then, and that's only two pounds fifty for students. Sounds good. Is that in the city hall too? We could go. Well, I'm busy actually, but it's at the sports centre if you're interested. Oh, right. Thursday's the cheapest event, only one pound twenty-five for students, and it's on in the library. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> Probably the college choir. <laughs> Actually, no, they've not been asked. Apparently, oh, no, it's a poetry evening. Hmm, isn't there any modern dance on anywhere? On Friday, that's at the college. It's quite expensive, though, fifteen pounds for adults and twelve pounds seventy-five for students. Oh, yes, that is a lot. If I'm going to spend that much, I'd prefer to go out on Saturday. Yeah, me too. But on Saturday night, there isn't live music or a party or anything, just the fireworks in the city park, and that's only one pound fifty. Yeah, that'd be good. Section two. You are going to hear a tutor talking to a group of philosophy students. First, look at questions eleven to thirteen. For these questions, complete the blank spaces in the table as you listen to the first part of the talk. Write no more than two words for each answer. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Dr. Russell, and I am your tutor for philosophy this year. I think we're all here. Let's see, five, six, seven. Yes, that's everyone. Before we look at the three lectures you've had on philosophy this week, I would just like to run through a few things about what you can expect of me as tutor, and what in turn we expect of you. As for myself, my function as tutor is to help you in all things relating to your work in the philosophy course. The help that I am able to give is, of course, mainly academic. For personal matters, I can refer you to other support services in the university, ranging from counselling to、um, welfare. One thing that I would point out is that if you feel that you need to talk to someone, no matter how insignificant it is, don't leave it. Oh, and the last thing is, if you do need to make an appointment, the times are listed on the door of my room. You just. Write your name in a time slot,、uh, but I would point out that the appointment slots get booked up quite quickly. If it's urgent, catching me between sessions is the best idea. That way, we can sort something out quickly.、Um, no questions. Before the talk continues, look at questions fourteen to twenty.
As you listen to the second part of the talk, answer the questions. For questions 14 to 19, circle the correct letter A, B, or C. For question 20, write no more than three words for the answer. OK. As regards you as students, the tutorials are voluntary. You're not obliged to attend, but you are encouraged to do so. Last year, for the first time, a register was kept of students attending lectures, and this year tutors are being asked to keep a register of tutorial attendance. This is not a formal register, and not all tutors will be doing it, but in the philosophy department, all of us have chosen to keep registers. Another point that's being emphasised this year is punctuality. When we did exit questionnaires, we found that people arriving late for tutorials and lectures was the single most annoying thing for the majority of students. Mm. I would therefore ask you to try to be on time for the tutorials, mm. and for all your other classes for that matter. Mm. As regards the tutorials themselves, we will have a review of the philosophy lectures of the week before, with the discussion being led by one of you each week. There is, of course, some planning involved, but you should rely primarily on the notes you made at the lectures. This will not take up the whole of the 90 minutes allocated to the tutorial. For the rest of the time, we will look at a particular philosopher, period or concept for which you will be expected to do some preparation each week. This will range from reading about a particular individual or concept to preparing a brief outline on a subject of your choice. How much you put into this depends on you, but we're not expecting in-depth analysis at this stage. Um, are there any questions so far? I'd just like to ask whether the work we do in the tutorials counts towards our continuous assessment, and if so, how much? I was just coming on to that point. All the work you do in the way of essays and project work that is graded counts towards your continuous assessment grades. The mini-presentations and lecture discussions will not be graded, but obviously, as time goes on, these activities will, I hope, have an impact on your work and hence your scores. Does that answer your question? Basically, yes. But what about... That's the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 3. Section 3. You are going to hear a conversation between a student and a driving instructor. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 21 to 24. Hello. I'm going to be your driving instructor today. Are you ready to begin? Hi. Hope you don't mind. It's my first time driving a car. Of course not. That's my job. I teach people like you how to become a safe and responsible driver. So let's begin. Remember, the most important rule of driving Safety first. There are some steps to follow. First, you should put on your seatbelt. You should always remember to do that. In case of an accident or emergency, having a seatbelt on is of utmost importance. OK, I have my seatbelt on. Now what should I do? Start the car. Good. Now make sure that the steering wheel is in the proper position and that your seat is not too far or not too close to the pedals. I'm all ready to go. Should I shift into first gear? 
Don't forget to put the parking brake down. You don't want to drive with that up. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. If I have the parking brake on, I won't be able to accelerate. Yes, that's right. Now put the car in reverse and slowly back out of the parking space. Good. Put the car in first gear. When should I shift? Is it better to shift slowly or quickly? You can shift whenever you feel is appropriate. This means shifting should occur smoothly. Do not shift too slowly, or you will stall. Shifting too fast will waste gas. Shifting is simple. Just remember to shift smoothly. To shift, you will have to push the clutch and then push the gas pedal. Now look at questions twenty-five to thirty. Now listen to the tape and answer questions twenty-five to thirty. Remember, smoothly is the key to good shifting. Like this. Yes, that's good. Now keep it slow. Don't drive very fast just yet. Be sure to constantly check your mirrors for oncoming traffic. Always be aware of everything that is around you, including three important things. Remember these three: people crossing the streets, other cars, and bicycles riding next to you. What should I do if I see a yellow light? Well. It's always better to brake instead of trying to run it. But if you're travelling at a speed where it's impossible to stop in time, then you should try to make it across the intersection. But remember, you should always try to stop. It's the safest way to avoid an accident. Even if I have to brake very suddenly. Yes, even if you have to brake suddenly. What about if a driver behind me is going a lot faster than I am? You should always be ready to move to a slower lane if a driver behind you is forcing you to go faster than you are comfortable with. Never try to speed up to accommodate a faster driver. You could risk an accident or a speeding ticket. It's better to let him go. That sounds like good advice. Be careful. There is a sharp turn up ahead. Remember to brake before turns. Otherwise, you might flip over if your speed is too high going into a turn. Got it. I know that I should always try to observe all traffic safety. That's right. If safety is not your first priority, it will make driving very dangerous for you and other drivers on the road. Okay, park the car here. You did a great job today for your first day. I'll see you in three days. Thanks so much. I will see you then. This is the end of section three. You now have thirty seconds to check your answers. Section four. You are going to listen to a lecture on language learning. First, look at questions thirty-one to thirty-five. Note the example that has been done for you. As you listen to the first part of the talk, tick the appropriate box for questions thirty-one to thirty-five. This is the first in our series of lectures on language learning. The topic I'd like to deal with today is what makes a successful language learner. 
There's been a lot of research into what makes some people learn a language faster than others. In this lecture, I'll summarize the main findings of the research into the subject. There are many factors that influence how quickly one learns a foreign language, of which exposure to the target language seems to be one of the most important factors to consider. It's this factor which determines the speed of learning a language, especially among those people who learn a foreign language outside the classroom. There are more people who did not learn a second language or a third language in the classroom, and I think that understanding how learners successfully learn languages without the help of a teacher can provide us with the key to how to become a successful language learner. Let's look then at the characteristics of a successful language learner. Motivation seems to be one of the key factors. Research into motivation has identified two main types instrumental motivation and integrative motivation. Instrumental motivation is the kind of motivation that encourages people to learn a language for practical reasons, such as getting a job or passing an examination. Learners with this kind of motivation intend to use the target language as a tool or instrument to help them achieve a goal. Integrative motivation is what encourages learners to learn a language in order to communicate and socialize with others who speak the language. The primary aim for learners with integrative motivation is to use the language to integrate and identify with the community that uses the language. Immigrants, or people who are married to speakers of another language, are motivated in this way. Although most people have mixed motivation, research into language learning and acquisition suggests that integrative motivation produces much better results and is an important characteristic of successful language learners. Before the speaker continues the talk, look at questions 36 to 40. As you listen to the second part of the talk, answer the questions. One does not need to be an extrovert to learn a foreign language, but willingness to experiment and take risks is essential. Introverted or anxious learners who are afraid of making mistakes find it harder to learn a language. Good language learners will try to experiment with different ways of learning vocabulary or grammar until they find the way that suits them best. Language is a complex system. Successful language learners often design complex learning systems to master a language. They think about how they learn and organize their learning accordingly. They develop their own learning style and use a range of learning skills such as efficient revision techniques systems for learning and organizing vocabulary, the ability to monitor their own speech, and the ability to plan their learning. Finally, age is another major factor to be borne in mind. Children seem to be in the best position to learn a foreign language rapidly and with the best results. Older learners can also be very successful and become proficient at using a language. Adult learners who make decisions about their learning and are independent of the teacher, who are analytical and aware of how they learn, and who take responsibility for their learning, stand a very good chance of learning a foreign language successfully. That's the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Các bạn ơi, bài listening test số 17 của hôm nay đã hết rồi. Sau khi luyện nghe các bạn thấy ban điểm của mình hiện tại như thế nào, đừng quên comment ngay phía dưới để thấy biết nhé.